subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Uzma Jafri. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 17th of December. Indian Defence Minister Rajnath Singh holds talks with visiting French counterpart Parley in New Delhi. Terror groups targeting India continue to operate from Pakistan, says US report on terrorism. Kabul residents greet first snowfall amid woes, overprice hikes and unemployment. And now for all the details. India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh and his French counterpart Florence Parley on Friday held wide-ranging talks with a focus on further enhancing bilateral defence and security cooperation as well as pressing regional issues. Parley, who is on a two-day India visit to strengthen bilateral strategic ties ahead of the third annual defence dialogue with her Indian counterpart, said France is ready to provide additional Rafale fighter jets to India if and when a request is put forward for the same. India's Defence Minister Rajnath Singh on Friday met his French counterpart Florence Pali and held the third annual defence dialogue between India and France in capital New Delhi. A wide range of bilateral regional defence and defence industrial cooperation issues were discussed in the annual meeting, said an Indian Defence Ministry release. The ministers reviewed the existing military-to-military -military cooperation, which has increased in spite of pandemic challenges. They discussed ways to increase defence cooperation in all domains. Defence industrial cooperation was discussed with a focus on future collaborations and co-production between the two countries. Pali earlier said her visit is intended to solidify the defence cooperation between the two countries and announced to deliver more Rafales to India. Earlier in the day, Parley inspected the Guard of Honor and paid tribute to Indian soldiers at the National War Memorial. She also called on Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and is expected to meet with other Indian dignitaries during her visit. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi has been conferred with the highest civilian honor of Bhutan, Nadak Pelgi Khorlo, the Bhutanese government said in a statement. While conferring the award, Bhutan King Jigme Khesar Namgyal Wangchuk highlighted support PM Modi extended over the years and particularly during the COVID-19 pandemic. Bhutan on Friday conferred its high civilian award Ngadak Pelgi Khorlo on Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Overjoyed to hear His Majesty pronounce Your Excellency Modi Ji's name for the high civilian decoration, Ngadak Pelgi Korlo, Prime Minister's Office of Bhutan, said in a Facebook post. Bhutan's King Jigme Kesar Namgyal Wangchuk pronounced PM Modi's name for the much coveted civilian decoration and highlighted the unconditional friendship and support that India under PM Modi's leadership had extended to Bhutan over the years and particularly during the COVID-19 pandemic. Since the start of the pandemic, India has provided assistance to Bhutan in the form of COVID-19 vaccines and other medical equipment. Earlier this year, Bhutan PM Lote Tsering had congratulated PM Modi for achieving 1 billion COVID-19 vaccination doses. He also stated that Bhutan, being a close neighbour to India, feel more secure. According to India's foreign ministry, mutually beneficial economic interlinkages between India and Bhutan have been an important element in bilateral relations. India continues to be the largest trade and development partner of Bhutan and has extended its assistance to several development projects in the country. Indian President Ramnath Kovind departed from Dhaka on Friday after wrapping up his three-day Bangladesh visit, sealing an action-packed 2021 for India-Bangladesh ties. President Kovind, who was the guest of honour at the Golden Jubilee celebrations prior to his departure, inaugurated Ramna Kali Mandir in Dhaka, a temple that was destroyed by Pakistan during the 1971 war and also addressed the Indian community, where he stressed on the importance of the uniquely close relationship shared by the two neighbours. 
Indian President Ramnath Kovind wrapped up his three-day state visit to Bangladesh on Friday as the country concluded its 50th Victory Day celebrations. President Kovind, who was the guest of honour at the Golden Jubilee celebrations, inaugurated Ramana Kali Mandir in Dhaka, a temple that was destroyed by Pakistan during the 1971 war. He later addressed the Indian community, where he stressed on the importance of the uniquely close relationship shared by the two neighbours. Bangladesh has a special place in the hearts of Indians. Ours is a uniquely close relationship based on age-old ties of kinship, shared language and culture. Our ties have been nurtured by the sagacious leadership of the two countries. To celebrate the 50th anniversary of victory over Pakistan, India's Border Security Force and Border Guards Bangladesh organized a joint beating retreat program on Thursday, which concluded with the exchange of sweets between the two forces. Bangladesh, or East Pakistan, as it was known after independence from the British and its guerrilla resistance movement, Mukti Bahini won the 1971 war with the help of Indian military forces and separated itself from West Pakistan on December 16. India and Bangladesh have maintained close ties since then. Pakistan has failed to take adequate steps to counter terrorism and prosecute terrorists, including masterminds of the 2008 Mumbai attacks, such as Jaish e Mohammed, founder Masood Azhar, and Lashkar e Taiba's Sajid Mir, according to a latest report on terrorism by the U.S. State Department. Terrorist groups targeting India continue to operate from Pakistan and Islamabad did not take action against other known terrorists, including jaish e Mohammed founder and UN-designated terrorist Masood Azhar and the 2008 Mumbai attack project manager Sajid Meer, who remains free in that country, according to a latest report on terrorism by the U.S. State Department. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken in the 2020 Country Reports on Terrorism issued on Thursday said that regionally, terrorist groups continue to operate from Pakistan. Groups targeting Afghanistan, including the Afghan Taliban and affiliated Haqqani Network, as well as groups targeting India, including lashkar e taiba and its affiliated front organizations, and jaish e Mohammed continue to operate from Pakistani territory, according to the report. Pakistan did not take action against other known terrorists such as Azhar and 2008 Mumbai attack project manager Meer, both of whom are believed to remain free in Pakistan, the report said. The report noted that in February and again in November, a Lahore anti-terrorism court convicted lashkar e taiba founder Hafiz Saeed on multiple counts of terrorism financing and sentenced him to five years and six months in prison. It acknowledged that Pakistan made additional progress in 2020 towards completing its Financial Action Task Force FATF Action Plan, but did not complete all Action Plan items and remained on FATF grey list. In news from Afghanistan, the abrupt withdrawal of foreign aid following the Taliban victory in August has left Afghanistan's fragile economy on the brink of collapse, with prices for food, fuel and other basic staples rising rapidly out of reach for many. Amid woes over price hikes and unemployment, Kabul residents greeted the city's first snowfall of the season on Wednesday. Kabul residents greeted the city's first snowfall of the season on Wednesday amid growing concerns over shelter and hunger in Afghanistan. The abrupt withdrawal of foreign aid following the Taliban victory in August has left Afghanistan's fragile economy on the brink of collapse, with prices for food, fuel and other basic staples rising rapidly out of reach for many. <laughs> Almost all Afghans do not have enough to eat and a failing economy could tip Afghanistan's increasingly dire situation under Taliban rule into catastrophe next year. 
the UN's World Food Program, WFP, said earlier this week. WFP survey showed an estimated 98% of Afghans are not eating enough, with 7 in 10 families resorting to borrowing food, which pushes them deeper into poverty. WFP spokesperson Thompson Fili told a Geneva briefing on Tuesday. Nepal Defence Minister Minendra Rijal tendered his resignation from the country's Council of Ministers following his defeat in the Nepali Congress Party's internal elections. Rijal had unsuccessfully contested for the post of General Secretary from the panel opposed to Nepal Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deoba. He stood fifth out of six candidates for the two posts in which Gagan Thapa and Bishwa Prakash Sharma emerged victorious as the General Secretaries. Rajal on Thursday said the outcome of the party election had shown that his support base was shrinking and it was therefore not proper for him to continue in the post of Defence Minister. In the 14th edition of the General Convention held earlier this month, PM Dioba secured the comfortable majority securing the post of party president for the second consecutive term after the second round of voting. The 75-year-old leader, who has become Prime Minister five times, secured 2,733 votes, leaving his contender, Dr. Shekhar Koirala, behind with 1,855 votes. India's northern Agra city, known around the world for its iconic monument Taj Mahal at the banks of Yamuna River, has been battling the curse of both water and air pollution for over a decade. People in Agra city took up the task to raise awareness and condemn the administration for its inability to clean Yamuna River on Thursday. People in India's northern Agra city took up the task to raise awareness and condemn the administration for its inability to clean Yamuna River on Thursday. Activists and locals were seen cleaning Yamuna riverbed laden with garbage on Thursday and also accused the government of making false promises to clean the river and building a barrage. एक विशेष अभियान सफाई अभियान यमुना के किनारे चलाया गया जिसमें यमुना की तलहटी की सफाई की गई यमुना का सफाई अभियान तीन दिन लगातार विगत तीन दिन चलाया जाएगा जिसमें कि नगर निगम को सूचना प्राप्त हो गई थी तो कुछ उनकी टीम वर्कर आकर साथ सहयोगी शहरवासियों के संग लग गए हैं और आगने वाले समय में आगरा के लिए बैराज की अति आवश्यकता है अगर आज बैराज होता आगरा में तो यमुना की बदहाली इस हाल में नहीं होती यमुना अपनी खून के आंसू ना रो रही होती अपनी जान की भीख ना मांग रही होती शहर की जनता से आगरा known around the world for its iconic monument Taj Mahal at the banks of Yamuna River, has been battling the curse of both water and air pollution for over a decade. Most of the pollutants in Yamuna in the city come flowing from higher grounds, mostly Indian capital New Delhi. Local factors such as dumping of waste, cattle grazing and administration neglect have also played a big role. इतने सारे बांध बन जाएंगे तो आगरा तक तो वैसे ही नाले का पानी आ रहा था और पानी आना बिल्कुल बंद ही हो जाएगा तो क्या आगरा प्यासी मर जाएगी या आगरा के लोग पलायन करें यहाँ से हमारे तो हाथों में ऐसे पकड़ा दिए झुंझुना जैसे मतलब वादे करके चले जाते हैं बैराज 25 तीस साल हो गए पैंतीस साल हो गए ना बैराज बना ना रबर डैम बना ना कुछ बना According to the Central Pollution Control Board, around 70% of the pollution in the Yamuna River is human excrement and industrial affluence. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.